you are the Shakuhachi master. I am. Kumamoto. I, well, not of Kumamoto. And, and Toronto. <laughs> By far, not of Kumamoto. Um, uh, however, um, well, I, I mean, these are not accolades. They're just, <laughs> they're just time-related stuff, right? Um, I was the first foreign shakuhachi master in Kyushu for many years. Now that's really cool. Yeah. That's very cool. And um, well, there have since been others who have come, but um, I'm one of those. You know, I'm there, believe it or not, there's an international shakuhachi community which is very active. Um, it has centers of activity in um, Holland, United States, Canada, Australia, uh, now China, um, some people in Singapore, uh, India, uh, Russia. Uh, okay. I mean, wow. there are Chakalachi players all over the place now. Wow. There weren't when I first started, but you know, it's sort of spread quite a lot. And Fancy. to the point where they've developed societies like the European Shakuhachi Society, which is very big, and um, it sponsors all kinds of educational programs and um, you know concerts and and workshops and things that's, like that that's all great. the time. That's wow. Yeah, and uh, I happen to be known by all those people oh, okay. now uh, because yeah. I'm one of the old guys right? Yeah, right, 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 right. Yes. <laughs> I've been around a long time so <laughs> yes, uh, right. once uh, once Shakuhachi went onto the internet and in creating forums and yeah. things like that awesome. of course I was always on those forums so my name got known to people and then another thing that uh, I got interested in is um, I don't know that you can easily see this this is my Shakuhachi and uh, kind of back here can you I can you see right in there yeah. there's a mark on there uh, like a stamp I, I don't know if you can see that very clearly on there but all shakuhachi pretty much all shakuhachi have uh, what's called a yakin which oh. is a, a burned on stamp like a hanko okay you know or inkan um, okay. uh, yakin of the maker's Inside. name. No, no, out here. Oh. Right here. This mark right here. Oh, right, right, right. Can, can yeah. you show that again? Oh, okay. Just at the top of my finger there. Okay, that mark. Yeah. Right, okay. Gotcha. Okay. So I became interested in these things, and um, on the fo international forums, you know, people were always asking, po posting pictures of these things. And, hey, does anybody know who this person is? And can you tell me anything about him? You know, and that kind of stuff. Oh. And so I realized there was this kind of need to know situation with regard to at least makers uh, yakin. So I created the first Shakuhachi makers yakin database, which is free to access by anybody oh. and uh, I have I don't know how many about 150 or something like that of nice. these yakin with the names the translations and if I get the information uh, you know who the person is or was their contact information if they're still alive and who their teachers were and what styles they make and all that kind of stuff and I try to fill it up with that kind of information and so my database has become a go-to place for loads of people all over the the planet excellent. interested in shakuhachi excellent okay yeah. i don't think i knew that yeah that's yeah. great yeah. fantastic wow yeah. great uh, so do play it. Yeah, let me play a little bit uh, for, for you. Um, yeah. So just to as a background, um, there are different schools of shakuhachi, uh, traditional in Japan. Uh, one of the biggest is called the Kinko school. And uh, uh, Kinko is basically the kanji for um, old and koto. <laughs> so, uh, Kinko uh, um, 
yeah, it's a very big school. There are you know thousands of players in Japan belonging to this school. And essentially, in that school, we have two types of music. One is has its roots not in that school, but in uh, the Buddhist traditions of uh, in a certain sect of Zen Buddhism, which existed in Japan in the uh, starting in the eighth century, I guess, mm -hmm. and went all the way up into the Edo period. Mm -hmm. uh, and this uh, sect of Buddhism used the shakuhachi as a tool of meditation. So um, we all know what zazen is, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. who has any knowledge of Japan knows mm -hmm. what zazen sure. is. Uh, well, zazen is simply sitting meditation. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. um, this form of meditation is called suizen. Okay. which means blowing meditation. So oh. it's it's really focused on breath and just the movement of air in and out of your body and how it it creates and, and moves energy in your body, basically. Uh, so Excellent. this form of music, which was played by uh, mendicant monks uh, in the Edo period and up, to the Meiji period basically but they pretty much died out by that uh, monks called Komuso and, and this kind of music is called uh, Honkyoku Honkyoku simply means original music Hon means original Kyoku means song so if, if you you can sort of see what this uh, score looks like here if you get a view of course, it's upside down it's there, upside but, down there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is one piece uh, uh, of that genre, if you want to call it that, Honkyoku genre from the Kinko school, um, of which there are, I think, 37 of them only. Wow. But there are many, many more of this type of music. They just weren't adopted by the school. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. temple basically had... A, a few pieces that they played right oh, so really? yeah okay. this piece is called uh, Takio Tochi no Kyoku so it means oh. the falling the song of the falling waterfall Excellent. Okay. and okay. this one is it's a unique type of Honkyoku original music because it's a two-part right now okay. Honkyoku was all, it's meditation so it was always one part Right, you don't meditate together with somebody else. You you meditate by yourself. That's yes. the whole point. Sure. But this was, I think, in the transition period from uh, strict honkyoku or original music into the second form of music, which the Kinko school plays more predominantly, which is called sankyoku music. Mm -hmm. Sankyoku means three songs. And what that refers to is music that was performed by koto, shamisen, shakuhachi, and voice. Right? Yeah, so nice. that's called okay. sankyoku. Right. And so this, I think, was kind of maybe written in the transition time where it was becoming more of an entertainment mm -hmm. uh, form and less of a spiritual form right uh, but anyway uh, I'll just play a little bit of the beginning so you get a sense of sure what this is like please right? do please do Takio Tochi no Kyoku <laughs>
excellent. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's yeah. great. It's great. So I noticed you, the the you, the pitch changed. You went like an, an octave higher or something. Is that? Oh sure. Is that? I guess you do that with your breathing out. But like I said, it's a very basic instrument. It has four holes on the front yeah. and one hole on the back, right. and a blowing hole and an exit hole oh. uh, at the other end. That's it. Gosh. And yet, yeah. you can play. Uh, you can play the yeah. chromatic scales, chromatic not just diatonic, but chromatic scales yeah. on it. Yeah. So it's. Uh, it all has to do with your head position and your uh, fingering mm. position over the holes. So there's partial fingering on the holes and, oh, you know, wow. like that kind of stuff. Excellent. Yeah. Great. yeah. So in as much as it's a truly simple instrument, it's yeah. very difficult to learn. <laughs> yeah, it seems quite like it would be quite difficult to learn in that respect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing good about the shakuhachi, I yeah. guess you can just take it anywhere you go. More or less. It's, well, <laughs> uh, no, it's bamboo, right? So oh, you can yes, take it yes. anywhere in Japan that right, you want. Right, Especially, right, right. Okay, yeah. you might have trouble in the winter in Hokkaido uh, and the northern regions, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, south, mid Honshu down. Everywhere is okay, but I um, not this instrument, but I took another one I have to Canada mm -hmm. one winter without knowledge, without oh. you know taking precautions. Yeah, and uh, I opened it up in Canada and it was split open oh. in like three big places all the way down wow. the instrument, okay, and right, right. it was a heartbreak, right? Yeah. Because uh, it was the instrument that my teacher's father made for me oh, wow. right at the beginning uh fortunately he was able to repair it and oh, you know it was great. all playable after that oh, but good, good, good. yeah bamboo doesn't do well in cold dry places or in dry places basically gotcha. yeah well okay thank you very much yeah. for your time today you bet really appreciate it yeah nice to talk to you thank you great.